Going live. We're live. Are we live? We're live with ads. There we go. There we go. We're live. We're online. Well, welcome to MTV Over 40. Welcome, you midlife shredders. This is our first live stream ever. And I'm joined by my friend Jason. You've seen him on many of my videos. Uh, Happy New Year, guys. 2023. Yeah, 2023. I mean, it's, it's only the fourth day. And so I uh, hope things are going well for you. Uh, 2022 was pretty cool. Yeah, and painful. And painful <laughs> for both of us. For both of I'm us. I'm glad it's over. Uh, for you guys that are tuning in live, welcome to another MTV Over 40 video. Thanks for joining us. If you're watching this on a replay, welcome as well. Sorry we missed you, but uh, I'm glad you're checking out this video. Uh, we're here to talk about the uh, one year being on an e-bike on a wire peak. And you can tell by the beautiful tires right here in the center of your view. <laughs> well, I don't know why we're hiding the bikes. I don't, we couldn't. Okay. Well, first of all, I had planned on this being Who a multi, multi-cam uh, broadcast, but um, thanks to Amazon and their delayed delivery, their cable for my second camera did not arrive today or yesterday when it was supposed to. So it's just going to be single camera, but that's okay. Um, we're going to have fun. We're going to talk about uh, our Fazari Wire Peaks. We're going to talk about um, pretty much anything you guys want to talk about. I'm I'm pretty stoked about this. So bikes, um, bikes, bikes, more bikes. Um, so 2022 was uh, great and not great. Started off well. Back in February, we took a trip to Guatemala and did some crazy riding in Guatemala. Um, now, you might have noticed that I haven't really talked much about that or there's no videos about that, and there's a good reason for that. We've got something special, really cool, that's going to be coming up hopefully pretty soon, um, at least in the next, mm, hopefully this year. <laughs> but uh, that's why we haven't shown any videos or, or, or I've shown any content from that. But um, that's where we started in February, and then... Um, and then what do we do after that? We went to North Carolina. We did Canuga. First time at Canuga. That was pretty fun. Mm, one of my faves. Canuga Bike Park and, and uh, Henderson, North Carolina. Amazing. If you haven't checked that out, you must. Um, but we did that. And then what do we do after that? Oh, we did. Um, Ride bikes. Well, we've been riding bikes. <laughs> Uh, but I was we, I was gonna pull up my Strava so I could like remember, remember all our rides. So many good trips. Yeah. Hey Diego, my friend in Guatemala. Hey Diego, good to see you, man. Good to see you, Cole. Glad you're uh, turning in. Thanks. We are cute. I appreciate the comment. Yeah. Look, love that. The second um, half of Cole Train right there. Yeah, Cole Train. Um, do you feel that having an e-bike have you become more reliant on the motor? We're gonna get to that. We're gonna we're gonna get to that, Rad Dad. Uh, I promise. Um, but, uh, yeah, we did, uh, burn, yeah, went to North Carolina, did Burn Peak. World did, famous Burn Park. <laughs> burn Park. Yep. And we did Canuga, and then we did, what was, uh, the other trail, the trail system? We did, uh, DuPont, where DuPont. I had my infamous yes. handlebar break <laughs> wreck. <laughs> that was fun. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then we did, we went to Utah. That was an awesome trip for the uh, Fazari Ambassador Gathering. That was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, and Epic. kind of ruined me <laughs> on like local trails because I don't know, tidal wave at Deer, like it's like 50 jumps in a row, like down, like I don't know. It's amazing. It's amazing. And it does, well, you know, so at, good. Least, at least if you're not familiar being out west, you know, like us, we're here in the east. It's it 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 does kind of ruin you a little bit because everything there is epic. Everything is very scenic. Uh, so yeah, we did Deer Valley. We also did Payson Canyon, which is amazing. Um, so had a lot of fun with the ambassadors, the Fazari ambassadors, and that was just an epic trip. And uh, and then we kind of rounded things out. We we went to a new park called Ride Birmingham. We uh, closed out the year. 
Yeah, and we opened the, the year. year too. We opened the year as well, so that was a lot of fun. So we did kind of dual, dual. It took my son uh, on uh, a couple of days before New Year's, and we rode with him, and he had a blast. And then a whole bunch of Nashville crew just went and um, and yeah, rode. There was a race called the Hammies, so it was cool to be with the Nashville gang riding there as well as just uh, just hanging out with a whole bunch of people and riding the trails. And we didn't race, at least Jason and I didn't race. Um, but a couple other Nashville people did. It was amazing. A lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, so that was 2022 and we're here in 2023. So it's been about a year since we've been riding our e-bikes. So I thought maybe we'd talk a little bit. Why? Why an e-bike? I've got thoughts. <laughs> I think Jason does. Jason has a lot of thoughts. Um, oh man. Yeah, Colorado kid, man. Hey, thanks for uh, thanks for checking in, man. Good to have you in on board, uh, man. Jeff Jackson, another yeah, uh, Jeff, Cesar ambassador. Dude. Shout out to you, dude. Um, yeah, you guys are killing it, man. Welcome, welcome. I figured we'd <laughs> the fly next guy bikes. Nepal. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm down. Hey, I'm all for flying bikes, man. Yeah, let's do that. Um, but why why e bikes? Well, I'm gonna let you start with that. All right. So, <laughs> the, I mean, firstly, I got an e-bike because Bobby got an e-bike. <laughs> I did get uh, one first, yeah. he's, he, he was the first to pull the trigger, and I said, I, I must have one as well uh, because I was used to smoking Bobby on the climbs, and that just feels good in your heart, you know? Just, ah, I can beat this guy getting up to the top of this hill. That was all I had because he'd smoke me going down, so... Because and he's you know he's also so you know a few years younger than me so you know I'm gonna make that excuse. I can let him have that advantage now, <laughs> climbing faster than me. Uh, no, but the the real reason was is I haven't been riding all that long. It's like I think we're on year three. We're almost yeah year three. Yeah, coming yeah. up on three years, and I, you know I'm in my mid forties now. I, I'm just like I want to get as good as I can get, kind of as fast as I can get there. It's like I've been riding a lot, you know sometimes four or five times a week, just trying to get as much in as I can. And one of the things that I, I wanted to improve and get better at was jumping. And so on my Delano, which is a fantastic bike, I love it. Uh, I could get X amount of reps in on jumps and that was all I could do. I'd, my legs would cramp out. I'd be done. I could, you know, I could only progress so much in a day riding uh, a regular analog bike bring in the e-bike now all of a sudden i can use all of my leg energy going down doing jumps adding reps and then re actually recovering on the climb to get back and that was literally a game changer for me it just allowed me to, to ride so many more miles going down and saving my legs for that part of it instead of getting all my exercise just going up and down but doing less overall so I think with e-bike, I've, I've improved my fitness. I think that's controversial. <laughs> uh, it's but because I'm doing a lot more than I would have ever been able to do on a regular bike. So yeah, that's, that's the main reason for me. Yeah. And, and, you know, very similar. I, for me, I just wanted to go farther. Uh, I, you know, most of our trail systems here, you can do on a regular bike, one lap or the, the entire trail system. They're only like about anywhere from eight to 10 miles on average around here. But when we go to Chattanooga where the trail systems are 20 plus miles or Knoxville or any other place, um, you know, I wanted to be able to do more, uh, whether that was lapping jump lines or just going further. And, and yeah, I'm, I suck at climbing. I mean, I really do. I, it, it's, it's just, I was always the last in line. Not that that was a big deal. I would always make it up, but but I just didn't want to be the one everybody was waiting for. Um, and so an e-bike would allow me not to only just, you know, uh, do what we set out to do, but also go farther. And I just, I enjoy being on the trail. I didn't want to have to peter out. Um, and I, and, and surprisingly, I found out that my fitness level did not drop. I did a video, uh, several videos ago, I did a, uh, uh, um, an episode about, you know, did I lose any fitness because of it? And turns out I didn't. I, I, I feel just as good when I get on my regular bike as I did before, I have just as much energy. And that's just because I'm able to do more miles. I'm able to keep my heart rate up. I'm able to do 
um, pretty much I was doing before. Plus, I'm also navigating a heavier bike, 20 extra pounds. You're maneuvering that around the trails, you know. And one thing I realized after first riding my e-bike was my my chest muscles were a lot sore, a lot more sore. And so that's because I'm maneuvering uh, more weight. And so um, not that I'm any more buff. I don't. I don't <laughs> I don't think I am, but anyway, I haven't noticed. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, all that to say is that, uh, yeah, both of us kind of similar reasons. We just wanted to do more and, uh, because we just, we loved it. I mean, we have, we are still fairly new, only three, almost three years into riding. Um, but it's, it has just been a, a world of fun for us and, exploration and things like that we just love to do so oh yeah there's our reasons but that brings us to the fazari wire peak now we were already fans of fazari uh i had uh the la salle peak you had the delano peak yeah and you know so obviously we wanted to stay in the family when we saw the wire peak and that just appealed to us for many reasons uh one price point is amazing for value the, yes yeah i mean you cannot beat the spec that you get with the with the wire peak um, we were, we were in it in less than what, $5,000. I mean, we had an EP8 motor, we had DBO suspension, we had pretty high end spec, uh, components. And so, uh, that really solidified it for us when, when it came to why a Fazari wire, wire peak. And so, uh, do you have anything to add about that? Yeah. I mean, that, that's the highlights. I think it's just, it was a rad bike and it was, it was in our brand that we love and yeah, the value of it. I don't think I could get anywhere close to that for the price. Yeah. Like I would have had a piece of crap bike. <laughs> for that and we can't money. have that. We can't have that. We just can't have a piece of crap bikes. <laughs> That's not what you want. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So let's talk about the, like, like Jason said, I got mine first. He got his like literally like two weeks later. It's a project. I wish I could, show you the video there's a actual video of, <laughs> of of that happening of jason surprising me uh when he got his so uh, it was pretty epic he, he uh yeah he got me on that one but um yeah so we we got our wire peaks now we each did something a little different though um and so like i said i wish wish we could see them a little bit easier but uh maybe we can just <laughs> talk about it. there it is so this is jason's that's mine over there I got the silver. He got the army green. Um, I'll let you talk first. Like, what'd you do different with yours? Here, actually, I'll, I'm going to get up. Oh, and I'm going to, that way we can see it. He's, he's getting up. Yeah. So this is my wire peak and it's a one of a kind. Cause I did things to it. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think one of the things that I really enjoyed about my Delano was when I went a mullet with it. So I've got a 27 and a half inch on the back and I ended up just selling the stock tires and wheels when it came with the bike. I, I decided I was going to do my own wheel set. So I've got the, the stands MK4, the flow MK4 wheels with uh, I9 Hydra hubs and again, 27 and a half in the rear. And I just love that configuration. I did flip the GA link to the high position for that. Um, just to get the bottom bracket up a little bit. One of the, man, one of the huge advantages of the wire peak is it does have a pretty high bottom bracket, at least compared to my Delano. It, it's significantly different and I can tell it on the trail. I'm not worried about pedal strikes on just about anything I'm trying to pedal over, which is cool. Um, I really enjoy the, the DVO Diamond E3 fork. I actually kind of don't, tell anybody but i kind of like it better than my fox 36 <gasps> on my delano what? that's maybe controversial <laughs> entry level fork feels just as good or better i don't know it's weird um but i liked it the dvo so much that i did end up uh swapping out the rear shock uh when my rock shocks exploded on me i uh landed a jump and squirted out all of the the gooey bits inside <laughs> and had to send that off for service. So meanwhile, I wanted to ride my bike. So I bought uh, the DBO Topaz uh, Gen 3. And holy cow, what a shock. It's, it's made a tremendous difference for me on that bike. It, it feels amazing in the open setting. It's basically like super simple to set up, follow the instructions, very easy. Um, but it's got this T3 compression switch and it's only got, it's got three positions. It's got basically open, mid and firm. 
And I have never seen such a dramatic difference between uh, the compression settings on a shock before this one. So the open, super plush, just buttery smooth going down some gnarly trail. Uh, the mid position is kind of where I leave it uh, for the majority of just normal trail riding and jumping. And then the firm position, it's almost like a hard tail at that point. Uh, it's great for climbing, just fantastic traction and efficiency. So love that shock. Uh, other things I did to the bike was I, I ended up trying some different pedals, um, tried some Magped, some Avery Labs, uh, magnetic pedals. And then I ended up with these tenets after I saw Bobby's and, and really liked them. So I, I, I just really, I don't know. I like flats. It's kind of where I'm at. I like the magnetic stuff too, but I'm a flats guy, I think. And so that's why, why I did that. Went with those, uh, loam dropper, PMW range bar, the loam, uh, dropper post lever, um, one up EDC tool and pump. I mean, just kind of some normal stuff there. Uh, and yeah, that is pretty much the major changes on the bike anyway, from stock. So yeah, nice. it's fun to ride. What do we got? Good times. Good times. Oh yeah. So lucky he's asking about the bottom bracket. Yeah. It's significantly higher and I, I have them in the same configuration. So the Delano is also a mullet and has the GA link flip to the high position and I, I don't have the measurement. I could go measure it sometime, but it's it's a significant difference on the height of the wire peak over the Delano. So interesting. Yeah, once I mean we we would ride similar trails uh, with our regular bikes and with our e bikes, and I noticed a big difference between bottom bracket. I mean, uh, I was constantly pedal striking with a LaSalle with a LaSalle Peak my enduro bike, and uh, <laughs> on the wire just never noticed it. So, so yeah. that and the wires come with shorter cranks. Yes, so yeah. that's plays into that as well it just overall yeah. you feel a lot higher up on over they, terrain i think they're 165 millimeter like arms. yeah yeah versus i've got 170 on the lasalle so um so yeah so that is that and then i've got what i did on my bike um was yeah, get out of the way. there you go there you go there you go on all its glory um so my my wire peak um Came stock, just just basically just like Jason's. Um, I pretty much gutted it. Um, I put my RockShox Zeb 170. Um, I had the Super Deluxe um, and for the shock, and I put Magura brakes. It came stock with uh, Shimano. Uh, I put Magura brakes on it. Um, uh, I left the Shimano drivetrain just because it's already kind of, you know, Shimano motor, Shimano drivetrain, just kind of left it. Even though I have um, SRAM Eagle on my LaSalle, I just kind of left it. It's not bad. It's, it, it's a drivetrain. I mean, uh, I've got Magura uh, brakes, rotors. Um, I've got the, uh, I tried the one-up dropper post, 180 mil. Uh, and that's been that's been working good. I have the PNW on my LaSalle, but the one up dropper post works great. Very similar, has a little bit more reach uh, with the 180 mil versus 170. But uh, but yeah, it works great. I have the um, I have the SQ Lab saddle. Uh, I love that 60x saddle. Uh, I've got them on both my bikes. Those are great. Um, get much more comfortable on the butt. I love it. Um, I can't say enough about the SQ Lab 60X saddle. Um, recently, and if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I have struggled with handlebars and grips and numbness in my hands. Um, and I have, you know, gone through the gamut with all kinds of handlebars. Um, I took some suggestions and went back to the one up carbon bar and have been riding that recently. I love it with the rev grips with that combination. Now I haven't done a lot of long rides, you know, chunky stuff, but, uh, at the bike parks we did, um, all day, never had any numbness. We did Oak mountain, did a couple of long runs with, uh, thunder and lightning. You know, those are black trails, uh, downhill enduro downhill, um, or downhill tech and downhill flow trails and never, never felt any numbness. So I might have solved, hopefully it might've solved my <laughs> hand numbness, uh, with the one up, uh, carbon bar and the rev grip flex or rev grip, uh, uh, the rev grips. So, um, 
that's pretty much it uh, as far as the bike. I've got my Flow, Sans Flow EX with the one by one in Industry Nine one by ones. Uh, great. Uh, I have the Delium tires that I'm trying out. I'll do a review on those later. Um, they've, those are have been impressive as far as grip and, and similarities to other tires, uh, the Maxxis tires that I've been using. Um, so yeah, I mean that's pretty much it. Uh, it's been it's been awesome uh, bike and yeah. So I thought you know there you kind of got some specs as far as what we've did to our bikes. That's different from what you get from stock. I thought we'd talk a little bit about um, the pros and cons. And, uh, and then, yeah, well, if you guys got any questions, we'll jump right in and, and uh, talk about that. So, um, yeah. 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 Pros or cons. Pros or cons. What do you want to start with? <laughs> it's your show, buddy. <laughs> All right. Let's talk for the pros. The pros. pros I mean, aside from... Aside from, you know, the obvious of just, you know, riding longer, uh, the power, uh, the, you know, all the things that you're going to get with pretty much any e-bike. I think the pros with the Fazari Wire Peak obviously is a price point. Um, but on top of that, the it's it's kind of been no not any major flaws. I mean, I've, we put it through the ringer. We put it on... Enduro trails, we've done downhill tech, we've done uh, jump flows, black lines, you know, blue lines. I mean, we've done all kinds of trails, uh, and it's just kind of handled it. I mean, uh, for uh, the way it's specced and the way the geo is, it's kind of more of a of a of a, of a, a an aggressive trail bike. Yeah. Um, so not really on the enduro side, but I think I think we've pretty much abused them, and and it's pretty ha it's handled it pretty well. Um, we've taken it to, uh, I mean, when we went to Guatemala, our camera operator, uh, Carson Fletcher, he used my oh, e-bike yeah. and man, he, tw <laughs> <laughs> I was watching him cause he was a lot of times he was ahead of me and, and he was, man, he was just sending that bike down some gnarly stuff. And so, oh, yeah. uh, it's got some scars to prove it too. <laughs> Thanks, hey, it's Carson. durable. <laughs> we've seen it. We've seen him take some hits and crashes and handle it and yeah. And you know, worst thing you think you have to do is turn your bars back yeah. or, or replace it after they've been snapped, <laughs> Bobby. Actually, that was almost. But up. then yeah, another pro I think would be like the EP8 motors, just a yeah. super solid power system yeah. for e-bikes. I, I know it's still relatively early, you know, stage for the technology, and it, it's going to be improving and changing uh, as the years go by. But at, at right now, that's a solid, solid motor uh, to have on an e-bike. Yep. Uh, Chief B, MTB, I assume the tires were out faster. Curious how they yeah. will hold up compared to the M brand. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, uh, that is for sure. Yeah, the, uh, actually, Jason made that comment when I ro rolled the bike into <laughs> his garage. He was like, man, the knobs Riding are looking, slicks. Uh, <laughs> looking pretty <laughs> down. Um, yeah, and I'll talk about that when I do a review on these tires. Yeah, they, they do wear out quicker, I would say. You know, I've had them on the bike for probably about four months. And I've ridden in some great places. Took them to Utah, um, so uh, I've ridden lots of different trails with them. And I will say they handle great. Um, I would say just as good as the Maxxis tires. Um, now I had I had the uh, Schwabi Eddy Currents. Yeah. Uh, when I built that wheel set for this bike, and it went probably I'd say nine ten months. Yeah. Um, I rode on those. So was, I mean, I feel like that's pretty good. If I can get a whole season on an e -bike. set of tires on an e-bike, e they, they were pretty worn down at the end of that. Yeah. And so I, I went ahead and I went back to the kind of the standard for middle Tennessee, at least is the minion DHF and DHR. Yeah. Um, but I'll see how long they last, but I'm hoping I'll get till this time next this year. Yeah. Next it's December, next this December. December. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, the Deliums are great tires, but yeah, they, they do wear out quick, but you got to take the pros and cons. I mean, they're, you it's, know, 55 bucks, I think, you know, versus 75, $80. So, so there's that. Yeah. Um, now I say we, it's, it's almost like it, it does and doesn't wear out quicker because you might wear them out in the same amount of time as your regular bike, but mileage wise, you're put also off, getting more you mileage. That's a whole true. lot more wear and tear mileage this is on true. that tire. This is true. So it might be not a time-based, right? You know, thing that you want to look at for that. That's a very good. That's a very good point because, 
yeah, even though four or five months on an e-bike, um, you're going to wear through tires, but you're going to do that. You're going to ride more mileage anyway, you know, versus a regular bike. So that's a good, that's a good point. Um, so the cons, <laughs> mm. the cons of the bike, um, yeah, I mean, we're, trust me, we're, we're fans. We love the facade. We're, we're obviously ambassadors, but we, you know, we also recognize that, you know, there, there's, there's some things that can be improved on and there's some things that, and, and some of it has nothing to do with the bike itself. It's more of just, you know, just the, the characteristics or what it is for me. Um, the cons is more of just about the, the geometry I needed. I need more travel. I you know, mm. I would like a little bit more travel. Um, again, like I said, it's, it's kind of more of an aggressive trail bike. Um, the geo, I would like to see, you know, just a little bit more travel for the shock. And then the, the fork is fine. Um, but maybe just a, 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 maybe a degree slacker, um, for what I do, I would like to see that. Um, the, the other problem, the, the, the con for me is, is that charge port, <laughs> that little charge cover port. I just can't stand that thing doesn't stay <laughs> in. I've already ripped one out because it's rubber and I accidentally <sighs> caught the, caught the flap with the plug and ripped them both out you know so if you're like gentle with your tech and know how to treat things well <laughs> like me then you don't have to worry about it it's not that bad yeah but sometimes <laughs> i just want to get out and go you know so uh i, I would like to see the chart char a different charge port uh definitely so um and this is really more on the shimano motor for me it, it's noisy it's just noisy and it's kind of everybody kind of knows this it's got a like a little knocking sound Something inside is is just kind of knocks when you, especially on the more aggressive uh, trails that you ride, you're going to hear a little knocking sound. At first, I thought it was a problem. It wasn't. It's just what it is. Uh, all the EP8, or at least all of them, everybody that I know that has the EP8 motor has this issue with the sound. I've heard about like the, they, they say it's a clutch noise, like because it's a clutch bike, which allows you to kind of free will when you stop pedaling, right. which you want. You don't want to have resistance when you're going downhill. Um, I don't really notice it so much on the descents. I mean, the, I think the trail noise from the tires and everything are enough to drown that out. That's not a problem for me. And then overall, the EP8's relatively quiet. There, there are quieter motors out there, but the the whir, the <laughs> whir, as it, as you're you know, it's using the power, especially me because I ride turbo <laughs> all the time. Uh, it's pretty always, loud. Always, um, always. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not as big a deal. Uh, now there, I have developed some creaking in mine, and I've been trying to to solve this, and it keeps coming back. And uh, it, it first went away when I pulled the the motor mount bolts and and re like cleaned them, greased them, stuck them back in. That worked for a couple of rides, and this like kind of creak came back as I'm pedaling. And so this last time I pulled pedals, I pulled the motor off the bike completely cleaned everything, regraced everything, put it back in, thought, oh man, I'd solved it. It was perfect. And then the first time I go to tow somebody. Uh, <laughs> My son. Because I'm a nice guy. <laughs> uh, as soon as I start towing, and, and I don't know if it's just the excess load or something, I don't know what's happening exactly, but I've got this like little annoying creak coming from the motor somehow, but I'll keep working on it and see what we can figure out. Yeah, yeah, and I've developed a, a new sound as well, but it's intermittent. It's like I took a drop and immediately it started uh, clicking when I, you know, when I uh, engaged the motor. When I'd freewheel, it, it wouldn't do it. But so I knew it was something inside the motor. But then it would just stop, and it's kind of intermittent. So I'm not really sure what to do about that. Uh, so that I mean, that could be a con too. And I've got another right. con I want to mention. A uh, con is that it, it is a direct to consumer bike brand. So. Uh, you know, we don't, we didn't buy it from a local hobby shop down the street. So if like something fails with the motor, um, we can't just take it down the street and get it looked at. No, now we sure. might be able to, I don't know if there's any service centers in here. I haven't looked there. There probably yeah. are. Yeah. It's not like it won't get handled. It's just not as convenient as buying from your local shop and being able to go just take, take your bike, bike there. Yeah, so that, that could be a con for some people, especially the non mechanically inclined folks. If you don't like working on your bikes, um, <laughs> you know, you're going to want a local hobby shop to help you do some of the, the normal maintenance items to take care of. Yeah. And so, you know, yeah, it's take that for, you know, what it is. Um, I'm mean, like you said, I'm sure there's a Shimano, somebody that can work on Shimano's here locally. Um, we're in a fairly big town. Nashville is our local area. 
So hopefully yeah. there's someone. We just haven't gone that far yet. These are these are kind of new developments, so we're trying to figure it out. The other big con I think that every, I mean everybody's aware of with e-bikes is is the weight. Um, yeah. I, these are 50, mine's like 55 pounds. I don't know how much you're, if you weighed yours. Yeah, it's 54, I think. Yeah. It's like a pound of letter. Um, so, you know, 55 pounds, my Delano is like 32, 34, somewhere around there. So roughly 20 pounds more. And I don't know. I, 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 you know, some people think, oh, that's a lot. It's a heavy bike. Mm -hmm. But then I'm like, I could easily, I probably gained 20 pounds just in December <laughs> in belly fat. So I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I can see how 20 pounds is nothing like that. That's yeah. fluctuation water weight for some people. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's like, it's not that much, yeah. but it is enough. Like you notice it when you're like lifting the bike onto the rack. It's not like you oh, can't yeah. do it if you're decently fit. Um, but it is something to consider and it does affect the bike. I mean, it's only 20 pounds more on a bike compared to my enduro yeah. bike, but it, it, it does affect it. The center of gravity is lower. Yep. Um, this that's not necessarily a negative because it's super stable on a trail. If you're wanting to practice yeah. jumps or just even just riding down the trail, the bike is planted super stable because of that weight. Yeah. So on the flip side of that, if you're looking for something super poppy, playful, um, an e-bike is going to be less so than a regular trail bike. Yeah. Um, so you're going to pros and cons, right? So, yeah. You will feel it. I mean, I noticed it right away when I did some jumping, I started jumping with the, with the wire uh, I can definitely feel it, you know, pulling me, you know, as soon as you leave that lip, you feel that weight kind of carry you. So it's something you got to kind of got you get used to. And like I said, when you're navigating that extra 20 pounds, especially over technical trails, you, it's going to, you know, it's that inertia is just going to be added to your normal body weight. So just got to keep that in mind. It does change a little bit of the ride characteristics. I wouldn't say it's a necessarily a con to to ride an e-bike or or any e-bike really. It's just it's something you got to get used to. Um, one other thing to consider that I just thought of was also travel. If you love to travel, um, e-bikes are a little bit of a pain. I mean, you know, uh, you know, we've 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 I've flown with the the wire, flown internationally with it, um, and yeah, there's some, kind of some little little things that you kind of have to. Think about when you're traveling with your e-bike. It's not as easy. Obviously, the weight issue uh, with getting it on uh, on a plane, you're going to pay more for that uh, baggage, you know, because the weight is over the typical limit of 50 pounds. So, you know, and you got the battery and all that stuff. So there's uh, there's just some things you got to remember uh, if you love to travel and ride. Um, having an e-bike, it's it's possible, um, but it's also trickier. So you got to keep that in mind. It's not the same as when you just have your regular bikes. So, yeah. Um, so that said, uh, we kind of already talked a little bit like what we, a little bit like obviously with what we, uh, the pros and cons of the, of the e-bike, uh, you, you know, whether it's the Fazari wire peak or, you know, just e-bikes in general, but like, what would you like to see different? Um, like what would you, what would you, what would your wish list be, um, for an e-bike? Cause I know yours is a little bit different than mine. Yeah. So I, that's a hard question for me because there's, there's no like perfect bike, right? It's, I, I would almost want like three e-bikes <laughs> <laughs> all with varying levels of, of differences. So I'd like, yeah, I, more travel, bigger enduro, like yep. carbon probably yep. I wouldn't mind having. Um, but I think a bigger battery. I, I, that's one of the cons yeah. I kind of wanted to mention too. Uh, yeah. The, yeah. The, the wire comes with like a 508 watt hour battery. Yep. So I, you know, I'm like, I need two. So I went and <laughs> bought a second battery um, because I like boost mode as anybody who rides e-bikes should only ride boost mode. I don't know why they put eco and trail on these things. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Give me all the power uh, now. Some people still want to work. I mean, so, some people well, still want to exercise. That goes I, to the versatility of the e-bike, right? I still need to exercise. So Yeah, uh, whatever. Some of us that only weigh a buck fifty. Just go pedal faster up the hill. <laughs> whatever. Uh, so anyway, yeah. So they're, they're, I would say they're relatively on the small side capacity-wise for yeah. batteries compared yeah. to the rest of the market. Like we're seeing right. other similar bikes, seven, eight, nine hundred watt hour batteries yeah. that are able to ride for a significantly longer time yeah. without charging or changing batteries. Yeah. So I'd like to see that increase at some point. Yeah. But at the same time, give and take, like I also want the weight to come down. 
I, I'm kind of in the torn between this. Do I want a bigger travel, you know, more beefy enduro bike with yep. a bigger battery that can take some gnarlier stuff? Yep. Or do I want a smaller, lighter, maybe lower power uh, e-bike uh, that can do more poppy, feel, playful stuff? So it feels more like my Delano, but it's an e-bike, so I still have some help getting up the hills. Right. So I don't know. I want both. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, uh, same here. Like, I'd love a, a little bit lighter weight. Um, yeah, I mainly for me is is just I would love a, a larger battery and and really just more travel. Um, me being a little bit bigger rider, um, I kind of need a little bit more travel so I don't bottom out as much. Plus, I like you know a little bit. I won't say a plush ride, just more st more stable where I don't feel like I'm bottoming out or anything like that. Um, cause I've got that rock shocks deluxe. I've got it maxed out with three spacers and it's still at where it last setting. Uh, you can't see it on camera, <laughs> all of it. but it, I've used all of it, you know, so on the last run. So yeah, more travel. Um, now I will say that, you know, I can't say a ton, but Fazari is going to be coming out with some new offerings on the e-bike market. Um, we both have seen the newest I don't edition. know what you're talking about. Um, so <laughs> I'm sure they're coming out with new bikes. It's a bike company. <laughs> uh, we can't say too much, but we will say that it's, we're going to get a little bit of both <laughs> of what we want. Your um, wife is sold. She says, give me one. <laughs> Thanks, Susan. No, that's not Susan. That's my son on my wife's phone. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, so, um, uh, so yeah, so be on the lookout. Um, if you follow Fazari or anything, I would definitely, uh, follow them on, on Instagram, um, and any other social media because they are going to be coming out with a new e-bike. And like I said, it's going to give us a little, a little bit, not everything that we want, but a little bit of what we're, we're hoping for. So, um, so we're kind of, we're really looking forward to that. Um, so it's exciting. Interesting. I think, I think 2023 is going to be, is going to open up for some exciting things, especially in the e-bike market. I think a lot of the companies uh, are, are either ha that have not offered e-bike are offering e-bikes. You know, Ibis just came out with one at the end of the year. Uh, the Oso or Ozo, or I'm not yeah. really sure how to say that. Um, and that's their, I believe, their first e-bike. So I think more and more companies are adopting the idea of e-bikes. They're going to be coming out with more. And, at the, and now, especially most trail systems are allowing e-bikes because they recognize the difference between you know, e-bikes the class ones class twos and things like that and so they're they're starting to open them up and and be more um uh, just more accessible you know to more trails um hopefully more trail systems you know will see that and understand that this opens up a whole new world for people to explore trails get outside um fitness of all levels so i'm i'm excited about that i'm looking forward to uh this year and what you guys have to offer yeah, so so much fun and we're gonna travel we're, we're gonna, gonna travel go more yep absolutely lots of trail systems this year yep it's gonna be a good year we got a big big uh, to-do list um so um my wife who's watching you know she's probably already cringing <laughs> uh <laughs> but we do have a lot of a lot of ideas a lot of places we want to go a lot of places we want to go back to so we're excited so um i let's uh Let's open it up to questions. Q and A. Like so, man, you guys have been really active on the chat. I appreciate that um, and asking some questions. I want to go back through and see if I have any other questions um, that people have asked about. Um, okay, so we kind of addressed: do we come become more reliant on the motor? No. Um, you know, like I said before, I've I've gotten whenever I get on my railroad bike, I don't notice uh, an endurance drop. Um, I believe because mainly when I get on my e-bike, I'm riding more miles and my heart rate stand up. I'm pedaling more. I'm versus, you know, instead of doing eight to 10 miles, I'm doing 18 to 20. So, uh, each ride. So, um, so I don't notice a difference. Um, now I do rely on my motor quite a bit in, in certain areas. <laughs> Jason's a little bit different. So, I, you know, <laughs> I, I obviously like I, I'm, Fairly new. I feel like I'm decent, but I obviously want to improve, especially like cornering, being able to, to go faster. So one of the advantages I have to be able to keep up with maybe riders that are better than me um, going down is the ability to use boost mode. <laughs> like boost mode is the greatest thing to happen to bikes since the wheel. 
Uh, it just is. Um, but no, but it, it comes in handy if like a, a jump line's not well built or maybe you case a jump and then now you can't really build speed on a regular bike in mm -hmm. time to get the next jump. You're in boost mode in the right gear. You take one or two cranks and you're right back up to trail speed or, or more. So it's like real easy to get in the last little pedal uh, to, to give you a little boost of speed if you need it to clear a jump or to, to keep up with some other riders, um, which is only going to help improve your skills. So I, I think that's a, a great thing. And I do rely on that motor quite a bit to, I constantly do like one crank or one crank to try to get a little boost. There is a little bit of that. Yeah. I mean, you definitely feel that when you get that extra pe pedal crank, even on trail mode, you still get that. <laughs> you don't have to be in boost mode the whole time. No, so just wrong. so you know, <laughs> boost mode. So yeah, that does help. Um, uh, yeah. If you guys have any questions, not just about e-bikes, I mean, anything about the channel, anything about what we did, if any of you guys are out there in similar situations as us, getting started in your midlife. Um, yeah, feel free. We're going to, we're going to keep this open for a little bit uh, and you know, answer any questions you guys might have. Um, and while we wait, I'll talk about one accessory that one thing I bought to help <laughs> is the EcoFlow River Pro. This thing is awesome. It's a portable battery, essentially your generator. It's got AC outlets on the side. And it's got enough juice in this thing to fully charge one of our batteries. So if I'm out and I'm going on a, just an epic ride, I can ride, blow through one battery, come back to the car, pop it out, put the second battery in, put that battery on charge, and go out for more riding. By the time I blow through that battery, I come back, this one's now charged and you replace it and you just keep going. I mean, I can get three full batteries in. In a full day. In a full day. And yeah. I can't even, I can't even physically handle that, <laughs> but it's there if I want to, uh, which is awesome. So that, that's one of the reasons why I use boost mode all the time is because I always have a, a spare battery. Can. I'm like, if I run out, oh, well, I'll go swap it. You, you know, can. I don't have to like conserve battery. I love not having to think about that and having that kind of range anxiety that people talk about. I don't have that. Well, keep in mind though, an extra battery is like seven hundred dollars with the charger, so you know that's it's 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 quite an expense. The reason why I haven't bought another one, I in turn just keep mine in trail mode, and yeah. I go just as long as <laughs> maybe yeah. not quite, but just as long. So it, it's true. And so Connor's asking if you're using boost mode continuously, how long will that uh, that five hundred eight hour yeah. battery last? Yep. And I would say I can blow through it pretty quickly and it's yeah. going to depend on mainly the elevation and terrain. Yeah. Um, I would, I'm estimating I'll get to close to 3000, 2,500 to 3000 feet of elevation climb, uh, in probably 13 to 16 miles yep. of that, um, is what I'll see on boost mode yep. on a battery. Now you can go eco trail and you can easily get over 40, 50 miles. No, well, trail mode, which is typically what I stay in, I can get probably about, about 18, 19. So a little bit, a little bit more, um, out of boost mode. And also really it does with the EP8 motor, you have basically two profiles you can set up and you can really dial in how much power torque that you're using in each mode. So that's nice because I've actually set up two profiles. One, profile is set so that if I know I'm going to be on a long ride, like say 20 plus miles, then I have it set where my eco mode is just a little bit more powerful. My trail mode is a little less powerful. And so I can actually stay in eco mode uh, and change between the two quite uh, often during the ride and really get 20 plus miles out of it. Yeah. Um, and then I have another mode or another profile, which I use just when I'm just on my local trails. Um, where the eco mode is a little bit less, the the trail mode is a little bit more, and I have just basically the setup of boost, which I I do use, you know, when I have some punchy climbs or, or things yeah. like that that I'll use, but but uh, it gives me just enough power. Um, so that's what's nice about it is that you can really dial in and set it up so that even with the the battery, the the 508 watt battery that we have you can really squeeze out the juice as much as possible using those profiles. So yeah, uh, it does work pretty good. And then, and then cadence is important as well. Um, 
the slower you spin and pedal, the more work the motor and battery is going to do, and it's going to go through faster. And I've always heard that. There, guys on the forums and chats are like, yeah. yeah, a higher cadence is more efficient. You're putting in more work, so the motor has to do less. But I can also physically see it. So the EP8 has a display. So yeah. on our display, there's a little graphical icon of the amount of power usage. I don't know if you've really looked at it. Yeah, I've never really touched um, it. But you can watch it as you're pedaling, and it, it'll it's like a little uh, gauge almost. Yeah. And so uh, when you're pedaling really slow or getting to a real climb and you slow down and you're punching in a, like a high gear, you can see it peg out and go to full like torque and power. And if you gear down and go to a higher gear and spin faster, it comes down. Yeah. So you can, you can like visually see how much of the motor power you're using at yeah. any given time. And so a higher, faster cadence is going to be more efficient. You're going right. to get more miles out of it that way. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my son <laughs> is asking, does the heaviness of the e-bike affect how you jump? And yes, it does. Um, like I mentioned before, that extra weight um, will create more of an inertia so you have to kind of regulate that when you jump and so um i've noticed it and noticed it right off the bat the positive thing is that when you land like it is stable like it's one thing i've noticed i don't like on my enduro bike a lot of times uh you got that little that little you know that initial hit and then kind of like a, a bump up you know it's not as stable with the e-bike it's just you land and it's really pretty plush or I won't say plush, but it's just very stable. That lower center of gravity just really allows you to hug the ground. So landing is nice, um, but you do feel it when you start those jumps, um, especially on the takeoff. Um, you can feel that weight carrying you. So you just have to regulate that and and monitor that. So And, and e-bike doesn't mean not playful. It's not no. as playful as a lighter bike. Right. Um, but you can still whip them. You can still do all the same tricks and things that regular bikes can do. Um, it's just, it's a little harder to get them to do it. It's a little bit more stable. Yep. Um, cause of where the weight is. Yep. Um, yep, absolutely. and to maneuver that is, is just a little harder, but they can do all the same things as regular bikes. Yep. Absolutely. Oh, so dead air. Dead Next time you see my air. grandma out in her wheelchair, can you please stop trying to race her on your bike? It's starting to hurt her feelings. <laughs> Poor grandma. <laughs> Who's doing that to this grandma? That's good. Forrest Whitaker's left eye. That's, I, I mean, I love it. That's, that's, that's a great awesome. username. That's a great username. <laughs> uh, you guys are killing That me. is another thing I've been doing. So this, I don't know if this is helpful for people or not, but uh, I've been, uh, you've done it as well, but at, at taking my wife on rides, yeah. um, we stopped doing trail rides on mountain bike trails. Cause I don't want my wife to get hurt. <laughs> uh, cause I've gotten hurt and I know what can happen. Uh, so we've been doing more just like greenway rides, right? Just getting out on some smooth pave, just nice, easy trails. And, uh, if I'm on a regular bike and she's on a regular bike and I've been biking for three years and I'm super fit with that, she yeah. hasn't done that a whole lot. It's not going to be that fun of a ride. Yeah. We're not going to be able to go that far. We're not going to be able to have, you know, big adventure. It's going to be like two miles and like, oh, I need to go back home. Right, right. Um, so you stick your wife on an e-bike and I'm riding a, a cruiser or, you know, road bike. Yep. And all of a sudden she can pass me for one, which is crazy. <laughs> uh, but now we can go on like whatever I'm capable of. It's not on me relying on somebody else's that's not a rider's fitness to keep up. Yeah. So you can just keep up. You can just pump up the air pressure in the tires and yep. set the suspension and everything. Um, but that, that's been great fun. So we just go around Nashville and go find cool places to eat and go ride. So it's allowed us to kind of do that as a couple. And, yeah. and it's not it's not on a mountain bike trail, but yeah, it's the bike's great for that. And I actually took it one time with a group of guys that are like Sir Ron – uh, the yeah. little uh, Razor modified 72 volt like yeah. throttle bikes, like basically electric bikes that are yeah. you know not pedal bikes. They're right. and they go like 50 miles an hour or more. Yeah, and I was able to. They weren't going full speed, but I was able to pedal in boost mode. Yeah, set up for like road and keep up with yeah. them, like and and stay in that group. So it's like the bike hauls butt when it, it needs to. It's yeah. not like you're super slow, but yeah. it's kind of fun more for that. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I, my wife, you know, we've, we've tried our, our issue between me and my wife is just time. It's just this, our schedules, but you know, I did put her on an e-bike and yeah, she loved it much, much better. Uh, cause then we could ride together. We could ride trails. together. <laughs> Wait a minute. So, Tell the story. Well, the okay. Time. Well, they're actually the first time she did it. Was, this is awesome. Okay. So, all right. The first time we tried this, it was, she, I had to swap the wheel. I did, forgot I swapped the wheels. And so the other set of wheels didn't have the magnet. So, you know, if you know anything about e-bikes, you have to have a magnet um, that it's, it's on, goes on your spoke and that, that allows, you know, the, the motor or the, the, um, the system to read your speed and things like that. And it gauges the motor. So it knows you're not, you're not freewheeling. So, um, so it knows it's spinning. It senses that magnet. Well, I forgot to put the magnet back on. And so my wife takes the e-bike out. Now it'll pedal at first. It does a couple pedals, but then it cuts off motor will cut off because it doesn't see the magnet and she didn't tell me that she didn't know that and i send her through a, like a, a two miles of a trail and she says i didn't notice that much of a difference and i'm like what are you what do you mean i said it looks like awesome. i was not riding a new bike <laughs> it's like and then i realized oh the magnet wasn't on there so yeah of course you didn't because the magnet you didn't the matter the motor kept shutting off so that's oh, why the worst uh, but that has been rectified and so she does it does a little bit much better with e-bikes. So, so funny. A JLB MTB says, does it hurt more when you wreck? Hmm. I think it's more about being old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't uh, think the bike, unless it lands on you, don't yeah, do that. It doesn't, yeah. I mean, my wrecks, so I've had one major wreck with it, I think. Yeah, one major wreck with yeah. it. Yeah. And it was at, uh, it was on Devil's, Devil's Racetrack at, at Baker's Creek. Oh, yeah, that was a good one. My step up, my step up accident. Yeah, went flying off. Um, yeah, I, it was me. It was me. So I don't think it, it hurts more unless, like you said, it lands on you, which, yeah. which is, a, it's kind of a fear. Like it is there knowing that if I wreck this bike, it's going to, it's going to be, yeah, if, if it lands on me, which, you know, I've had back bike wrecks where the, bike landed on me or my yeah, leg or yeah. whatever and so yeah it's definitely definitely a thing in your head that you got to keep in mind but luckily both you know that time i didn't you've wrecked on yours yeah i'm gonna blame the bike on this one actually <laughs> my last wreck was in october i was like i'm like i'm gonna learn how to whip and so i'm like i can do a little little shimmy uh and i was like okay so i see guys whipping and they're like they're going up the face of the lip they're not going straight over they're kind of like carving right so i'm like well how do you carve a bike you lean right so i i went to go carve and i leaned and the bike is e-bike so it's super heavy and it's super stable because of that and it just it just wanted to stay there it didn't want to come back down underneath me. So it's totally the bike's fault. It's totally the bike's fault. Not technique. My technique was flawless. <laughs> All right. Just so that, that, that just needs to be said. Uh, so I landed like 45 degrees to the, to the <laughs> ground and hit like broke two ribs, had a concussion, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, yeah. But wear helmets, guys. Uh, <laughs> it'll be fine. So I was uh, hoping it knock some sense into you to yeah. actually stay out of boost mode. <laughs> yeah. That I, didn't man. happen. <laughs> So I don't know. I, yeah, I think the only the only time like an e-bike would hurt you more is if it like somehow landed Lands on, on you, you yeah. and that extra weight yeah. causes I mean, the problem. But, I mean, these yeah. things are pretty sturdy. I mean, you can see the weld marks on them are, are pretty beefy. Yeah, they're tough. Uh, they're pretty tough. Um, but yeah, it's it's you know with anything with power, it's like or a heavier bike, it's it, it's always a, a thing you got to look out for. You just you just carrying that around. So yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. Um, another thing about the e-bike you got to remember is that you're going to, you're going to wear through components. I mean, I've already went through a mm. chain. Yeah. Um, uh, so I've, I've, I think I've, uh, I go through brake pads more often. Um, I think I've got one right. I don't know. This is a very big delay. Anyway, there's a chain checker on the board there. So check your chains often. Yes. Cause once you stretch those out, then it's going to start wearing your cassettes yep. and chain ring. And, and then you got to replace more parts than just a chain. That's not fun. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So yeah, you're going to wear through components, parts and things like that. So, but you know, again, take care of them. You know, if you do regular maintenance, it should be minimal. Um, yeah. So what is Cole? Cole. Saying? He's, he's like whipping like a beast now. It's amazing. <laughs> I'm super jealous. 
Uh, do you wish the wheel speed sensor had a different setup? Remember your issue that one day where it cut? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know. We were like cut, taking a cut trail to session some jumps at Cedar yeah. Hill. Were you there for that? I don't remember. I don't think you were. Okay. Um, and then I somehow like wrapped up a piece of barbed wire fence. Oh, I was there for that. In my bike. And I, I was like, oh, that's not yeah. cool. And then I like, you know, pull it out of the bike and then I look. And then on the inside of the, the triangle at the rear, there, there's like this much space. It's like an inch or so. Yeah. There's there's wire coming out, and then that's where like the sensor is for the magnet to rotate by. Right. Um. So there's like a little bit of wire there, and so it cut that wire. Right. And that means your bike doesn't work. Yep. Um. You can still ride it like a regular bike. So I'm pretty very efficient or proficient with soldering. So I, it was not a big <laughs> deal. Like I didn't have to replace the wire. Just solder it back together. Yeah. And then I used like this uh, liquid tape stuff and kind of coated the whole wire to make yep. it just a little bit more durable and beefy. Yeah. Um, so I, th yeah, I, I haven't we'll... seen any bikes that don't have a little bit of exposed wire where they have the wheel sensor there. Yeah, they're usually in some place else. Um, some bikes have the have the magnet like in the rotor, right. embedded in the rotor. Right. Uh, just it just depends on the system, but I don't see there. I don't think there's a problem with this the way it works. It's just something to watch out for if you get a stick or something like yeah. jammed up in your 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 wheel. Yeah. You could potentially break that, but yeah, because it's a thin yeah. wire. It's yeah. not. It's not beefy at all. It's not like your brake cable or anything like that. So um, I kind of did the same thing. I saw what happened to him, so I actually took that <laughs> liquid tape and coated it. So I was like, okay, I'm going to add a little bit extra thickness to it. So, um, so yeah. So yeah, there's there's always those little intricate things that you got to think about and remember, and um, you know, don't forget your key. To your battery if your system has a key mm, so that's unlock. happened <laughs> that happened when we went to guatemala how about going out of the country <laughs> out of the country to take your battery out i didn't take the key it's on my key ring and of course you know i didn't need my keys because we're flying and i didn't think about it but that key was um was on my key ring so i didn't have them so we get to guatemala we could, I could put the battery in, you know, because I had the battery out when we flew. I could put the battery in, but the question was, how are we going to get it back out when we fly back? Um, luckily, we found a trick for it. We actually had to loosen all the bolts uh, for the mo for the battery mount, mm. so the battery would just drop out. There's a way. <laughs> there is a way, <laughs> but yeah, trying. If you have a key system, you know, I'd highly suggest. Uh, don't forget the key. Uh, our friend Norm Nielsen had a great suggestion, which I haven't done yet. Um, but probably should do is that he, he tapes his key. There's a, there's a, uh, oh, yeah. bottom cover, uh, for the motor and he, uh, tapes his into the inside, uh, so that if that ever happens, all he has to do is just drop the cover, which is just a couple of couple Allen screws, screws, Allen screws, which you carry with you on your, you know, multi-tool, um, drop that out. The key's right there, bam, put it back in. You can unlock the battery. So that's a great tip. Um, if you have a key system. Uh, probably stash it somewhere on the bike would probably be good. That's not easily accessible, so people can get into it. Of course, now I say that, so anybody watching, <laughs> hey, <laughs> people might people might actually uh, <laughs> look there first. So sorry about yes. that. X. All right, forget it. Okay. Um, so but I, anyway. I just thought of uh, something else I would add to an e-bike. I mean, I know like all the major manufacturers are going to watch this. So guys, <laughs> let me just talk to your designers about <laughs> what we need right now. And this, because like the majority of people will want this, is a USB port on the bike um, with like a retractable cord so I can plug into my heated vest. Because it's winter. It's winter time right now. And when it gets like really cold, like below 50 degrees, you're going to want to wear like a oh, heated vest. Um, maybe, maybe, you know, socks and pants, like whatever you can get heated, wear it. Because it sucks riding in the cold. Maybe so. please do because it could tap into that bike power. This, this power this, my vest. This guy will not go out under forty degrees, and I think I think that's pretty. I, I, that's pretty normal. You tell us. Weak. Comment. It's pretty weak. Do you ride below forty degrees? <laughs> yeah. If so, why are you crazy? Yeah, it's, even on an e-bike, it's even easier. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we've done an hour. Um, so I think we're going to close it up. Yeah. Good times, this, man. This was fun, man. Um, first live stream. Really appreciate you guys. Those of you who chimed in, asked questions, really appreciate you guys, uh, for watching. And again, if you, you're watching this on uh, replay, feel free to ask questions in the comments. I'll be happy to get back to you guys, um, with any answers. Not non-sponsored video <laughs> product placement. <laughs> 
Uh, appreciate Jason for uh, joining me on this. Also, the use of his garage because it's much nicer than mine. And so, um, so yeah. So, as always, until the next time, live, learn, and send it. It is never too late to start. We'll see you guys. Bam! All right. Push the button. In it. <laughs>